Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to be looking at Class 5 armor, what changes were made in 12, 12, 30, and which is best to use at the different stages of progression. Before we begin, today's video is sponsored by Outplayed, a fantastic video capture app that lets you easily record your raids, which I am always saying is an incredibly insightful tool for improving your game, and doubly so with your deaths. Outplayed supports 300 games, but for Tarkov specifically, it records each raid automatically as a separate video file, cutting out the stash organization in between and saving you hard drive space, as well as giving the option to bookmark sections whilst in raid as you go with a hotkey, such as after a really big fight so you don't have to hunt around for the recording later on. Afterwards, you can use the inbuilt video editor to cut the video to just the section you want and share it directly to Discord, Twitter, YouTube or Reddit from within the app itself to show your friends or the wider world. Do check it out, the link for the app is down in the description and the pinned comment. So back to today's video on class 5 armor. As usual, we will start with the highest protection, which is the Redoute T5. With 15 total armors in class 5 now, there's a bunch of new rigs in 12, 12, 30, which we'll come on to shortly, but the Redoute has managed to retain its number one spot with 200 effective durability, which is really very high, especially at this level of protection. By the way, if you want a refresher on how the calculations for effective durability work, go and watch the first section of my class 4 guide for 12, 12, 30, which explains this, and then come back to this video afterwards. I've used this armor a bunch myself in the past, and against the rounds that class 5 works for, it is an absolute beast at soaking up a ton of punishment. As a reference point, it's one of the only armors in the game that can take three full 8 dart flechette shells to the thorax and keep the user alive. Pretty incredible stuff. However, as you might imagine, this protection comes at a cost. Minus 37% move speed, minus 15% turn rate, and minus 14% ergonomics is really brutal, and especially important in 12, 12, 30 is the 16.5 kilos of weight. This pretty much guarantees that you'll be going overweight into raids with this armor on, even at high levels of strength, unless you really try to play around it with the rest of your gear. The T5 protects the arms as well as the thorax and stomach, which are usually considered to be a negative point due to the way that durability is shared across all the hitboxes, as this makes it more likely to die to a chest shot after taking hits to the arms. But this is one of the few armors that at least comes close to making this an advantage, purely because the durability is so high. It takes many, many rounds to get it low compared to the others and can leave you fighting with high effectiveness even after taking some punishment, whereas normally you'd have blacked arms which can make it harder to fight back. This armor is still only available at Ragman 4 with a barter after you complete the supervisor quest for 6 gas mask air filters and 5 paracord, which is approximately worth 230k at the moment. As a regular piece of armor, you get to choose a rig to take with it as well to choose your space, so it's practically a little bit more expensive than the armored rigs on this point. On repairability and insurance, as I said in the class 4 video, with armor repair kits so cheap, around 200 to 250k, the cost of repair is really a non-issue anymore, and that is especially so for the higher end armors. Skipping ahead a little bit to prove this point, repairing a Gen 4 Assault from 13.6 with Prapple costs 80k, whereas a repair kit takes 95 points. As they have 1,200 total usage, this is just under 8% of the kit, which even assuming a 250,000 per kit, and you can get them cheaper than this, this comes to 20k, and repairs between Skier and Mechanic in quality. A 20 out of 65 Gajel costs 75 points, equivalent to around 15k versus Prapple at 18, so the cost of repairing armors has flattened off significantly across the spectrum. The Redoute T5 is combined materials, which is very average to repair, meaning it loses some durability from the max when you do it, but as it has such a high starting point, you can get away with using these a few times after you get them back and repair them from zero. Insurance wise, again, as we worked out in the class 4 video, there is a defined formula for working out what this will be, and it scales up with trader level. Yes, that is correct, it gets more expensive as your Prapple level increases. However, surprisingly, the T5 is only the fifth most expensive out of the 15 total in armor class 5. This costs 49k at Prapple 4 to ensure. I think this armor is fun once you get to Ragman 4, but as it's class 5, you will die to 762 BP. If you're ready for that, then rock on. Next up, we have the first new piece of armor, the SNS Precision, which is worn by none other than Big Pipe himself. As this is the only way to get it, this rig is extremely rare and hard to obtain, with most players unlikely to see this at all during a wipe. With the second highest durability of all the armors in class 5, only just shy of the T5, it's a bit insane to be honest with really low movement debuffs. At 6.5 kilos, it's also one of the lightest rigs in the whole game, so basically if you could buy this thing, it would probably be hugely overpowered, but with the rarity, this is not a problem, at least not currently. The major downside is the thorax only protection, which typically comes with the low debuff rigs, and it doesn't have that great internal space either with 5 2x1 slots. Repair wise, as it's a polymer armor, these are one of the best material types for almost getting back to the original durability when you do repair them, and the insurance is in the upper middle costing 44k at Prapple 4. 
An amazing rig if you can get your hands on it, but I wouldn't count on it. The Gen 4 Fault is the same as it was in the last patch, with the third highest durability and bad stats. Although the minus 25% move speed is more workable than the minus 37 from the T5, the Ergo debuff is actually much worse at minus 22% versus minus 14, which hurts ADS speed much more for modded weapons in close combat fights. Also, its 17 kilo weight equally sends us into the overweight territory almost guaranteed when gearing up for a raid. Like the T5, we get arms protection too, but it's good to bear in mind that as we move down the durability scale, this becomes less worthwhile. The issue with the Gen 4 full is the barter, which is accessed after completing hot delivery from Ragman 4. Three lions typically cost around 400k, so it's rarely worth buying over the Redoute. As a titanium armour, its repair back to max is very average, and it's the third most expensive rig to ensure at class 5, with 52k from Prepple 4, so I'm not really a huge fan of this one. In fourth place, we have the other new high-end rig that was added this patch, which is the Cry Precision CPC, which is the one found on Knight. This is basically the same as the SNS from Big Pipe, but a little bit worse. Slightly lower durability, thorax only protection again, a touch worse on move speed, and around 3 kilos heavier. It does have a better internal layout with 6 2x1s and 2 3x1s, but the repairability is worse too, and is the fourth most expensive to insure at Prapor with 51k at Prapor 4. Another one of those great to find, but I doubt you will kind of armors. So next is the Gen 4 Assault. Like 1212, this armour is in a weird spot post the flea bands in the original 1212 patch because there are no ways to get it outside of raid. As a mini version of the Gen 4 full, we're looking at a modest decrease in durability which makes the arms protection start to become quite bad in my opinion, although we do get some improved stats at minus 20% move speed which is similar to the Corund, and minus 14% ergo which is the same as the Reduke T5. It's still massively heavy at 15 kilos, middling on repairability and insurance with a 36k cost at Prapple 4, so I guess this one is a use it if you have it kind of armour, but nothing special. The 6B13 modified, aka the killer armour, is about as interesting as the goon squad rigs these days. He's a little easy to find, but not by much, and the only way to get this one is also to loot it from him directly. The part that makes the killer great is it's the highest durability thorax and stomach armour without arms too, allows you to use a rig of your choice and has decent stats along with a low weight. There's a reason that this used to be one of the meta choices back when the flea market was still open for class 5 sales, so if you do manage to get one then you might want to combine it with one of your best loadouts for tricky PvP questing. As another polymer armour it repairs beautifully, although unfortunately it does have the second highest insurance rate with Prapple 4 at 65k. The AACPC is our first achievable rig for players, depending on your definition of course. With 133 effective, it still has decent durability and has one of the best move speeds across the whole of class 5. In fact, this armour looks very similar to the goon squad armours in many ways, including the thorax only protection. Although the durability is lower, it's pretty good in most other areas, but you do have to be careful on close maps where your stomach is exposed to shotguns like factory, as the 1.5 blacked out multiplier can kill you really fast. The reason why I say it's only sort of achievable is it's locked behind Ragman 4 and his long line quest since 1212, which requires level 45 to begin with and then needs 30 PMC kills inside them all on Interchange. If you like Interchange, this might be okay, but it's definitely my worst map and for those of us that are borderline allergic to them all, it's honestly a real struggle. Once done though, you get access to a pretty cheap barter. 4 Kodura, 4 Ripstop and 1 Whiskey makes this around 160k and is probably the most cost effective class 5 once you have access to it. As a nice bonus, the Kodura and Ripstop are decent crafts in the hideout anyway. We do always need to remember that you could have sold those on the fleet rather than using them yourself, so practically speaking they cost the flea market price and not the input cost price, but you do avoid market fees when using them yourself for the barter. The internal space of the AACPC is really good, with 3 1x1s, 5 2x1s, 2 3x1s and a 2x2, which makes it incredibly flexible both for loadouts and looting. As another polymer armour, it repairs super well and is right in the middle on insurance, costing 36k, a really good pickup once you can get to it. Onto the Redoute M, this is potentially an interesting armour because it's the best one that you can get access to at Ragman 3 for overall protection. Similar to the AACPC in durability, we get stomach protection back as well, although it has average stats and weight on the upper end in return, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's not unworkable. There is a straight cash purchase at Ragman 3 with no other requirements for 240k, which is kind of expensive, but in 12.12.30 a new barter was added for 2 books, 4 tech manuals and 2 cookbooks. This averages around 200k, so cheaper than Ragman in cash, but it could be less if you pick up your components at the right prices. Today I was looking at this at 170k or so, which makes it a lot more palatable. Again, with combined materials this means it doesn't repair that well, but on the plus side it's the third cheapest to insure, with 23k at Prepple 3 and 27k at Prepple 4. 
If you can get the parts cheap, this can be an option as it only puts it a little bit more above some of the cheaper class 5s, but you get pretty decent durability instead. The Gen 4 mobility is actually very similar to the Redoot M as a thorax and stomach protecting armour with almost identical effective durability and pretty much the same stats. It has a touch better move speed with a worse turn rate and a similar weight. I personally dislike high turn modifiers but it's ultimately personal preference as to which you prefer. This is bartered for 7 GP coins and costs approximately 225k but it can go down to as low as 200 if GP coins are sub 30,000. It also has a similar average repair rate with the titanium material and is a touch more expensive than the Redoute to ensure, although still on the lower end, 26k at Prepple 3 and 31k at Prepple 4. The next armour is the Tactech rig which is like a worse version of the AACPC in many ways. It's starting to get on the lower end of durability at this stage but with thorax only protection this is kind of okay, albeit with the usual downsides we take for having the stomach exposed. Its stats are still very respectively small and the weight is not best in class but it's under 10 kilos which is decent for a class 5. As another bartered rig, this one is Ragman 3 for 5 GP5 gas masks and 6 neoprene masks coming to around 200k. The GP5s are usually the expensive part for this and are a bit annoying to store when cheap as they are 2x2 so they take up a lot of space in your stash. Internally this rig is decent with 6 1x1s and 6 2x1s but as it's 4x4 on the outside it's relatively tough to be taken by others if you die compared to the other rigs like the AACPC. Lastly the polymer material repairs well for the Tactech and it ensures as the second cheapest of all, 20k at Prapple 3 and 24k at Prapple 4. Next up is the Osprey MK4A Protection. Similar to its class 4 brother, Thorax and Arms is a pretty awful combination at this durability level in my opinion. With relatively bad stats for a rig in this position, it's only accessible at Peacekeeper 4 after doing the Peacekeeping mission quest and for 188k equivalent is a hard sell to me at least. Internally it's pretty good with 2 1x1s, 6 2x1s, 2 3x1s and a 2x2 but I think it's just a bit expensive for the odd hitboxes and the debuffs that come with it as well as average repairability and a relatively expensive insurance cost. The Defender 2 was not purchasable last patch in 12.12, but we got a new barter for this time around. 2 Karund, 4 Aramid and 4 Ripstop get you a brand new Defender at Ragman 4, and while this doesn't make sense at face value given the price tag of approximately 350k, it could potentially be interesting to recycle broken Karunds that are low on maximum durability after being repaired a few times. Lots of people seem to like the Defender, but its durability is the 4th lowest, and although it repairs super well, with the steel material it has middling stats and weight, along with being the single most expensive armour to ensure across the entirety of class 5. This costs 76k at Prapple 4, which is really quite punchy in my opinion. Next up we have the Gazelle, or the Gazelle depending on how you want to say it. These last few are low durability, but it's good to remember that on the first shot you will be protected just the same as if you were using a Redoute T5 or a Killer Armour. So these are best for absorbing one, maybe two shots of something like M80, which would auto pen a class 4, but is a low chance against the 5s. The Gazelle is nice because for a low end armour it has good stats. The move speed is good enough at minus 10%, but the minus 4% ergo is one of the best overall, and at just under 9 kilos is relatively light too. We get stomach protection thrown in, and there is both a cache and barter access for it at Ragman 3. To buy it in cash, you need to complete Supervisor, which is a level 40 quest and costs 139,000, which I think is a little bit higher than last patch, but the barter is usually pretty decent for 2 gold chains and 3 coffee in the region of 130,000. One of the biggest issues with the Gazelle is its ceramic material. This means that it repairs like crap and it needs to be thrown out after a few uses, but after getting Ragman 3 at level 32, the cost is usually bearable at this point in your PMC's progression. On the flip side, it's on the lower end of insurance costs with only 25k at Prapple 3 and 30k at Prapple 4, but the one thing to bear in mind is that there is a quest to hand in a broken one of these, so they might get taken a bit more than you expect, especially mid-wipe when more players have this quest. I've always liked the Gajal for its low debuffs as it feels nice to play with in raid, although it's not the absolute cheapest choice if that's what you're going for. Second to last we have the new Bagari rig if that's the right pronunciation, this is just a touch lower than the Gazelle on durability and kind of unusually for a rig it has thorax and stomach protection which is great. However, minus 21% move speed is pretty rough and the 13 kilo weight is also limiting if you're trying to stay under the overweight threshold. The barter for this is at Ragman 3 and is 4 Kadura, 4 Fleece and 2 Alls which comes to about 155,000 at market prices. As before, you can craft the Kadura and the Fleece yourself, but you're missing out on selling it to somebody else if you do, so the opportunity cost should be accounted for using the Fleet prices. Internally, this rig is actually really huge, with 5 1x1s, 5 2x1s and 2x2s as well, making it quite good for loot runs, and with the steel material, it repairs really well too. 
It's also the third cheapest for insurance at 21k with Prapple 3 and 24k with Prapple 4, which makes it a decent contender for money running when you don't expect to be meeting too many players and having high mobility PvP battles. Finally, we have the Karund, which as usual is the lowest durability across class 5. This is the first one that players typically get access to, as it's available at Prapple 3 instead of Ragman, lowering the potential access requirements to level 26. Although it has relatively poor stats, especially on move speed at minus 18%, the 4 Diary Barter is usually good value, costing around 120,000. At Prapple 4, you unlock the cash purchase of 113k for it, which is the cheapest class 5 you can get access to overall, and with both the steel material repairing super well and the lowest insurance cost of all the rigs at 18 and 21k, the Karund is definitely the budget choice. So what is best to use? At the bottom end, the Karund at the entry level is fine once you get Prapple 3, but it's best used to tank a single hit of something relatively big and then dumping it. You can kind of consider it class 4.5 against full auto because even rounds that shouldn't be able to pen it, like 5601 or 45 AP, will shred its durability down super fast. So only the very first round is being protected against decently. The Bagari rig is not much different, but as it's more expensive, you have to make up for it by using the slot space to loot efficiently if you do go down that path. For cheap PvP, I still like the Gazelle, as it suffers from the same protection issues as the Karund to a slightly lesser extent, and allows you to move around much more easily with its lower speed penalty in Raid. Although the Redoot and the Gen 4 mobility of Ragman 3 technically have a chunk more durability than the cheap Class 5s, I'm just not sure if it's worth paying the higher price for them given that headshots exist. If you do want the best protection here though, my choice is the Redoot M. At Ragman 4, the best overall value is pretty clearly the AACPC, but the progression lock makes it a hard reach for most players, so unless you are able to deal with the huge movement debuffs of the Redoot T5, which honestly can be pretty fun, outside of finding the other good armors in Raid, you're basically stuck with the Redoot and the Gen 4 mobility. As these are so similar, you basically just pick the one with the debuffs that you dislike the least, or you forgo stomach and get the tactic instead. This is primarily why in class 5 there is an overwhelming majority of lower end armors seen used, especially the Karund and the Gazelle, because often it's just not worth getting the higher armors. If you're still struggling to level endurance this patch, then go and watch my light kits video next, otherwise as usual a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.